Hello, Health Journey Heroes, and thank you for coming back to our podcast. I'm Beth Black with Blue Sickness and Fine Wellness, and I'm so excited you're here with us tonight for our special guest, a dear friend of mine, but we'll get to that in just a second, because we know we're all on a health journey, and although our mantra is that we eat well, we exercise, and we supplement intelligently, we know there's so many touch points to optimal health, and it goes there's a lot housed within those couple of words I just said. And so we want to bring you numerous other people that are those touch points in different directions for you to be able to create optimal health across the board. And it takes a lot of knowledge and there's a lot of confusing stuff out there. So we we hope to always bring you some information that will be fun, enlightening, and enjoy the journey. And I will just say, if you're on a health journey yourself, or if you know someone on a health journey, please hit like below and subscribe for all of our podcasts. And thank you for joining us. So with no further ado, I want to welcome our guest tonight. I'm so excited. We met almost a year ago. And have you ever met that one person that all of a sudden, like immediately you click with, there's just like an instant energy between the two of you. Well, we met at a wonderful little health and wellness event that was outside and it was very hot. We were very sweaty, (laughs) Um, but she looked amazingly beautiful under her tent (laughs) in the shade. And I wasn't looking so wonderful outside the tent in the sunshine and heat, but um, we met and this, she's a functional nutritionist. She's from Sebring, Florida, and she is changing lives And together, we've had so many conversations that have been on Zoom. And as we do them, we're like, oh, we should have recorded that. And then the next time we're like, why didn't we record that? And so with no further ado, I welcome you finally to our first podcast together that is recorded. Welcome, (laughs) Lindsay Wilson. Hi, Beth. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be recording this. We have been talking about this, I think, since our very first Zoom conversation. We met at a health fair down in Venice at that beautiful little place called The Hollow, and I had curried cashews and little recipe cards out talking about functional nutrition because it's very different from regular nutrition, Um, and we got to talking, and she, I had mentioned that I had a sweet tooth, and she said, oh, I have this avocado chocolate mousse. I said, ooh, that sounds terrible, and... (laughs) She said, I thought so too. And that was kind of what our relationship, our friendship blossomed out of was over curried cashews and chocolate avocado mousse. And I'm just ecstatic to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for bringing back that memory. It's so fun to think of how people meet. You guys, you never know what conversation is going to lead to meeting the right people in your life. To And we've had these amazing conversations because, well, Lindsay, you entered this functional nutrition space. Why don't you just start there by telling people like a little bit about your story? What This is what I always say. What's your story, Morning Glory? We all have a story. We don't end up in this functional space. And I say that because I'm an occupational therapist by trade. So I was all about function. So the whole term functional nutrition, when I first started hearing it was like, oh, what is that? Because I know what a dietitian is. I know what a nutritionist is. What's a functional nutritionist. So can you kind of talk about that space and what that means for you and for people that come to you? Yes. Oh my gosh. This is my favorite part, mostly because there's just the most beautiful analogy for functional nutrition. And if you, so if you think of the human body as a tree, um, in allopathy and Western medicine, if the leaves get spots on them, so your skin gets a rash, what do they do? They give you a cream or what would an arborist do? They spray something on it. Right. And, or so basically they medicate it. And then when that doesn't, um, so they pill it. And then when that doesn't work, when the infection spreads and it goes deeper down into the branches, what do we do? We start taking out, we cut off the branches or we take out the gallbladder. We we have a hysterectomy. We take out the appendix, all these things that aren't vital organs that we've been told we can live without. Well, sure, you can live without them, but that doesn't mean that you should. I mean, they're all part of a very uniquely designed structure for everything to work harmoniously. And when you start 
medicating and pulling things out, you discombobulated the whole system. And so in functional medicine and in functional nutrition, we don't start from the outside or the leaves and the branches and go in what we do is we go down into the roots and the soil. So we're looking and the roots of the soil are your epigenetics, your inflammation and your digestion. So what is in your soil? What is, you know, what is in your soil? What is in your nutrients? Um, what is in your roots? What's in your genetics? That's all a part of it. And then what's in your diet? What are you eating that's turning on these autoimmune markers, because we all have tons of autoimmune disorders just lying dormant in our bodies. And then we have something that gets into our bodies, processed foods, immunizations, um, the water, the tap water. I mean, that's in a whole nother topic right now. Um, that disrupts everything. And so when we, when we could have to address what we can, but when we get all those things in our body, now there's inflammation and inflammation is what turns on those markers. Um, and so what we do is that, and you know, the, the bad news is, is that once the marker is turned on, you can't turn it off, but what you can do is you can mitigate the symptoms or put a dimmer switch on your symptoms so that it's manageable and you can live life. Um, and so it's much more solution oriented. And, and it's also why I'm not really allowed in hospitals. Um, I, you know, Wes, I'm not welcome in your primary care physician's office because when I was 30 years old, I was on 15 different medication for, excuse my language, shit I didn't have. <laughs> um, and I felt terrible. I felt terrible. I was on the couch all the time. Um, I was told not to exercise because it wasn't good for me. Um, I was told the most you can do is walk or bowl. Um, and there's, there's more behind that, but part of it was I was in pain all the time. I was told I had arthritis from the time I was 17. So I was on all these kinds of NSAIDs. Um, I ended up on a heavy duty osteo, um, osteoarthritis medication. Um, where I ended up with, I'm sorry, an RA medication that caused osteoarthritis um, or osteoporosis. And I lost a piece of my jawbone. I was kept having a root canal and a root canal and a root canal. I had four root canals done in the same place. And finally I went to a dentist. He's like, or an oral surgeon. He's like, your jawbone is toast because of these medication that you're on. So this part of my jaw right on the right side is cadaver bone. Mm -hmm. Well, come to, fa so fast forward to um starting a change in life i had you know i call it my jesus year 33 34 lots of lots of major changes some health changes some relationship status changes um and i hired my first health coach and she said your diet's crap and it was it was terrible i was a teacher and i hated my job and i ate diet coke and bananas when i met her i had chocolate chips and a bag of bacon in my purse and <laughs> Did you ever tell you that story? I guess not. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I was not eating well. I ate a ton of cheese and a ton of Greek yogurt. And she said, we're taking out dairy and sugar. And I said, that's my <laughs> whole diet. <laughs> and I said, well, I can deal without cheese before I can deal without chocolate. So we'll let's cut out the dairy. And now mind you, I'm 34. And I started this whole medication circus when I was 17. And within four days, I was able to like the swelling in my knuckles had gone down, like the swelling in my knuckles would come to a red tipped point. Mm. It looked like my knuckles always looked like I had freshly punched a wall. Um, twisting water bottles was hard to, uh, opening a door with a key, tying shoes, all those fine motor skills were so painful. Um, and most of the time I just handed it to somebody else. Um, so within four days of coming off dairy, the inflammation in my hands was probably 80 to nine, 80 to 85% gone. And so we dug a little bit deeper with my coach. Her name is Megan self. She's one of the best humans I've ever met in my entire life. Um, and we found out that I have a severe inflammatory reaction to the a one and a two case in protein and dairy. And that's all it was. And so after 20 years of going to doctors mm -hmm. at Baylor and Johns Hopkins and Mayo Clinic and City of Hope and University of Washington, University of Miami, UF, 
Not a single doctor asked me what I was eating. They just kept giving me medication. And so finally I really started to dig into the side effects and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what life is like without these. And now I don't recommend anybody do this on their own. I mean, liability purposes and just because I'm not you, this is what I did. I'm not recommending this to anyone. I slowly weaned myself off all of my medications and really leaned into the philosophy that food is thy medicine. And now I'm at 43 and I'm on zero medications and I'm the best shape I've ever been in. I'm the happiest I've ever been because one of the number one side effects, and I wasn't on, on any antidepressants. I was on stuff, um, for, uh, inflammation, arthritis, um, two different kinds of blood pressure medication when I never had high blood pressure to begin with cholesterol medication, birth control, all kinds of shit. And not to mention pain medicine from, you know, the pain in my hands. Um, and so now that's all, all of that's gone in my life. That's amazing. And that's, that's how we got here. And that's how you find, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, actually, I'm going to jump in. You, please I, I do. Love, Thank you. <laughs> no, I love this because here's the thing. There's people out there, Lindsay, who are suffering just like you did, just like I did. And tonight's not about my story. You can watch that other podcast, but they're, they're suffering just like we did. And they don't know there's necessarily answers because where they're going, the journey that they're on hasn't provided those answers. So our hope is that a podcast like this might reach somebody just like information reached you. And then my question is going to be in a second, and I'll lead into this is, you know, what was that trigger that made you find a Megan? What, what was it that made you make a decision that I had to look somewhere else? Did you watch a video? Did you hear somebody? Did you have something in your past that stirred up and you went, was it a God moment that you had a dream? What happened for you to make you pull the trigger to make a step forward in this direction? But before you answer that, mm -hmm. I just want to say, I love when you're talking about the roots because it's all about the roots. And that was my whole journey as well. And I always say, we are taught to take better care of our lawns than we are our own personal bodies. Take care of that whole outside. Make sure the hair's done right. And we've had this conversation many uh -huh. times. Make sure the makeup's all on right. Make sure the outside yard looks good. Make sure the outside of your house looks good. Meanwhile, the inside of the house is chaos. The inside of the house is chaos. Yep. This is all about getting to the root because when you take care of the root, the fruit will be beautiful. Yeah. And that goes for you know, we, we work out and we feed the body and we educate the mind. And this is a three-legged stool and we forget about the soul and what are we doing for the soul? And that can be such a scary place for people. That journey is a wild, messy, messy ride, but the people that you meet and the connections that you have, the superficialness of life disappears when you start to walk on that journey. When you start to feed your soul and come to a place and you realize nobody's normal, that's a BS word we've been sold on. We're all weird. We're all weird. And we're just finding other people whose weird matches ours on different levels and friendships and intimate relationships and relationships with our parents and with our kids and with our neighbors. You get to really dive into that and be present and not really worry about, you know, do I need to check my notifications on Facebook? Who cares? That's not real, you know? And so feeding the soul, I think is something that we are desperately missing, but we have to open the window when we do that through health, because what you had asked me earlier was what was the thing that triggered, there were several things that triggered me. Um, and it was, it wasn't in one day. Um, I was triggered to lead an authentic life and leave a marriage that 
I was no longer, I no longer was in love with him and we weren't happy. And so I honored my heart in that way. And on that journey, I dismantled my family. And then in another process, I realized I wasn't, you know, a few years down the line, I realized I, I did not like my career as a teacher. I was miserable. My last two years of teaching, I was at the doctor, had an illness, was on a medication or had an injury 76 times in two years. And what really, what triggered my health journey was um, one of those, my second to last year of teaching, everything was so out of control. I was so medicated. Um, and I didn't, I, when I got out of the shower, I just made a noise, just ugh. when I looked at myself in the mirror, mm -hmm. I was so sad. I was a single mom, owned a house, trying to do everything and everything felt so out of control. And I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw this woman's arms and I was like, I want arms like hers. And really what it was, was the only thing I can control is what I put in my mouth and what, how I move my body. And I don't really know how to do either of those. In fact, I've been told not to do most of it. And so it became a quality of life issue for me where I would rather, honestly, I would rather die than continue to be on the medications because I felt so bad. So I was like, well, I'm going to wean myself off the medications and start exercising and start doing the things they told me not to do and start going outside and quitting a, you know, a crappy job just for 401k and health insurance, because truth be told, I got laid off a year later and didn't have health insurance for four years and didn't need it until freaking COVID hit. And even then I still got what I needed at a healthcare clinic for 25 bucks. So there's something to be, there's something to be said about part of your soul is fed by the work that you do and the people that you serve. And I wasn't serving in a place where my heart was at. That was meant that that's just not my calling. This wasn't my path. And I had to step aside. So somebody else who was, who, who was that she could hear, she could step in. Mm -hmm. um, and that allowed me to step into this path. And so controlling all of that and realizing that it was worth it. I was worth it. You know, there's a lot of self-worth missing in this land. So much self-worth, like none, you know, we're taught to be selfless and give to others. I was, I was tapped out. <laughs> and so I hired Megan and I did everything she said to do to a T. I was so tired. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to do anything. And pain is a great motivator. Megan gave me a grocery list of suggestions. I thought I cleared out my whole fridge and my whole pantry and bought everything she said to buy. Um, her workouts, I do them twice. And she said, stop doing two a days, you know? And it was, um, she was the one that said, if you could do anything, what would you do? Cause I was still teaching at the time when I hired her. And I said, I would help people overcome fear. And she goes, what does that look like? I said, I have no idea. And she goes, well, whatever it is, go do that. And off came the entrepreneurial field journey and spiritual journey that really was not the best time <laughs> to say the very least. Um, there, there was some clinical depression involved in there. Um, a lot of friend support. I mean, my friends, I, I don't know what I do without my friends. And then when, you know, things really hit the fan, my family showed up for me and it was just that important that I swallow my pride and stop caring about all the things that I was losing and the things that I was giving up in order to follow this path because I sold my house and I moved away from my kid and worked things out with my ex-husband and sacrificed everything mm -hmm. to find what fed my soul. And now I have, and now, you know, I'm headed back up to Nashville and I have this great job at this great clinic and um, I have this great business that I'm building and these amazing friends and everybody's healthy in my life. And it's really become this, you get what you look for. You know, I used to joke around and say, I would shop when I didn't have any money. And I laughed and I would say to myself, you're going to be the best dressed homeless person. And I you not Beth, if I didn't become homeless, <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. And be, and even when you're joking, like, you know, the words we speak are spells. That's why we call it spelling. And 
it's, you know, we've got to look for those lessons and awareness. God shows up in people, places, and things, in song lyrics, in shows. You just have to pay attention. But really, you've got to be willing to swallow your pride and decide to do better for yourself. And it all comes down to self-worth, I think. I mean, if you don't have any self-worth, why bother? It's why we are, we're emotionally attached to food and we eat to soothe. And so I tell my patients, you know, when next time you take a bite of something, ask yourself, am I feeding, you know, am I soothing my emotions or am I fueling my body? Because you're making a conscious decision and it gets frustrating and old to people constantly listen to, oh, well, it, it's just life, just live it. Well, if you start to get healthy on the inside, that stuff doesn't taste good because the sugar, just because you're, you're not going to get a, you know, a ticket or go to jail for eating ice cream and driving, you're still numbing the crap out of your emotions. Let's not get that twisted for a second. And we do it with sex and gambling and shopping. We, we use the gym. I use the gym as a way to escape life for a long time. Um, so it's really about getting honest with our innermost self and saying like, Hey, what do I want out of this? And coming back to that place of like, I've got to look, be able to look at myself and say, I love you. And most people can't do that. That's right. But once you can, man, like things just open up. But it takes work. And, you know, first of all, thank you for entering that space right now, because I think that is the most important thing, because if we don't get our soul right, our spirit right, nothing else. Again, it's we always say people say body, mind, spirit. I want to reverse that and encourage people think spirit, mind, body, because it starts with your spirit first, then your mind and wrapping your mind around things to be able to match that together with your spirit and with your soul journey, what is it supposed to be? And then the body will fall in place because you'll start to make the decisions that feed you your very soul, feed your spirit, feed your mind in the positive direction. And Lindsay, I know, I know most of what you've been through. We've had long, long discussions over this. So many tears, so many tears. So many tears, <laughs> so many tears. And I always say people, you know, not everyone's ready to open the whole can of worms. Because if you open the whole can, all the worms are coming out. But sometimes it's easier to let all the worms out so that you can just start to get some clarity and clear the path. Because if you only let one worm out at a time and another one, it's a long ass journey. <laughs> well, and it never really it never really works like that. It usually works like some sort of domino where almost like where the lid pops off and it all comes out. But when it all comes out, I think where there's this misnomer that time in our life is linear and that we have to fix this next and then fix this next and then fix this next. And it really doesn't work like that. Like once you pick something to kind of sort out and look at, it all just kind of all comes up organically because it's so beautiful. My professor um, out of my functional nutrition school says, all things, uh, we are all unique, everything matters we are all connected. And that's with everything. It's sort of like that Fibonacci sequence that I love to, to watch and learn about that. And it's just this flow of life. And it's the same with this healing. It's not this, oh, I need to heal from this heartbreak. There's something way deeper than that. You know, what caused you to choose the man that broke your heart? What behaviors were you exhibiting? Where did that come from? Owning your part in your own life, I think is one of the hardest things to do. And, you know, I'm not, and I'm totally comfortable with saying, you know, over, you know, a decade ago, I struggled with an alcohol addiction, but what I clearly learned was that it wasn't the addiction to the alcohol. It was the fear. And, and I, cause I, that's what we call it because we can market that. Right. And it wasn't the addiction to the alcohol. It was the fear of facing myself. I don't have a problem with alcohol. I have a problem with myself. Um, and so at the beginning of that journey, you know, I, I was a rehab baby, um, did 60 days and it changed my life. Cause I didn't go there to get sober. I went to take a break from life because I was just so miserable. I like on my core and it stuck. And I went through, I was in the, in a 12 step program. And I will say that that is just foundational. It's just foundational of 
learning how to own your own part, learning how to, you know, reflect on, you know, what it was like, what happened in life and what it's like now. And, you know, to learn how to be a genuine person, (laughs) you know, when you don't know how to connect with yourself, you, there's no way you can connect with other people in an authentic way. And that space allowed me to, to have that journey, you know, and not everybody needs to start there, but typically people with addictions, it, again, that is a symptom of something so much deeper. And so the alcoholism for me was the spots on the leaf of something so much deeper. And I found out what it was. And it was like 25 years of carrying something around, you know, but again, it took so much pain to get to that place before I decided to change. And as I've gone through, you know, difficulties, you know, um, not being able to get pregnant, we went through infertility issues and going through the addiction issues and then divorce and becoming a single parent, all of these journeys, it's so much growth and there's so much relief on the other side because I see what it looks like at 70, 80 years old when people sit in that place and it's rotting, Mm -hmm. it's rotting. And you've got this energy, nobody wants to be around you. You're not an enjoyable person to be around and you're extremely hard to love. And so really it's like, what, what do you have to lose except for the rest of your life by not saying, you know, go, you know, feel free to go back to the way it was. That's exactly what they tell you at the 12 step program. As they say, if you don't like this, you're free to go back. There's plenty of liquor stores open. They're not going to turn you away. And it's the same with doing inner work. It's the same with changing food. You have the option to go back to the way things were. But what happens when we go through these transformations is a piece of us dies and our amygdala kicks in and says, oh crap, things are changing. Let me come up with a bazillion excuses as to why we can't do this. And you end up staying there. But if you bring awareness to that thought process and give your, just crack the window a little and say, hey, Maybe today, instead of having coffee, I'm going to have green tea or, you know, instead of having coconut, instead of having dairy, I'm going to have coconut milk. One thing, change one thing. I recommend changing one thing. Don't do it like I did it. That's not sustainable for most people. Um, Just change one thing a day. Take the pressure off yourself, Um, but do something. I mean, God knows there's plenty of things to watch on Netflix. And I always say, like, if I have 15 minutes to watch Netflix, I have 15 minutes to meditate. If I have three hours to binge on Netflix, I've done this. If I binge on Netflix for three hours, I will read a book for three hours or I will meditate for three hours. I tell my son, if you want to play video games for an hour, you got to do something, you know, educational and productive and something that's not video games for an hour. Wow. And so, yeah, feeding that soul piece is. Lindsay, so many incredible tips. I know we could go for hours. I know. Um, Sorry, that was long. (laughs) No, we will will definitely have more podcasts to do. Um, I think this is, here's the thing. I want to thank you. I know we just organically decided to not have an agenda tonight at all. We just decided to organically go wherever it went. And I love where it went because it starts with that. It is a soul journey. It is a spiritual journey. And you're not going to change and make those changes if something doesn't move inside you to make the changes. But I love that you shared, you got very vulnerable. So I wasn't sure if you would do that tonight or not. So thank you. Um, You got very vulnerable. And I think that that's so important because people need to know that we are not these um, people, these professionals, you know, helping guide people without our own stories, without our own can of worms, without our own things that we've gone through to be able to relate and be authentically there with someone. And that's what I love about you. You're authentically there with the people, your clients, you're authentically listening to them. And you have, you have such a wide range of clients that you see. Um, and so I just, in closure, because we'll come back and do more of these. I hope you'll come back and do more with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. In closure, just tell everyone where they can find you. And um, let's leave that for tonight. And we'll come back and we'll do some more of these and continue our conversation. That would be fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at lindsaylegs42. It's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. 
plagues 42 or at sunshinenutritionfl.com. Sunshinenutritionfl.com. That is definitely who you are looking for. <laughs> I love, I mean, I remember when we first discussed this and I was like, you said, what about sunshine nutrition? And I was like, that's you. <laughs> it's this glowing sunshiny face. And so I'm so glad you chose to go with that. <laughs> me too. Me too. You were, I, we, it happened while we were on the call. I was like, what about this? You're like, yes. <laughs> It was such a fit, such a fit. So thank you again. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope post below in the comments what you got out of today and what you took away from it. We want to hear from you. We love to interact with the people that listen in. Um, we love to hear from you. We not only like comments, we like to interact. So come and interact with us on Instagram or at our website. Um, leave us a comment, what have you, but have a great day. Be blissed and be healthy. Take care. Thanks, Lindsay.